eruption events in the Indian monsoon has increased substantially. We've seen almost a doubling in some of these very heavy rainfall events. Although the total amount of water falling down has not changed much, it's these extreme events that have increased. And that's in line with what climate prediction models are showing will continue to happen this century as the climate warms. The ice island that broke off of Greenland, that's four times the size of Manhattan. Can you talk about the significance of this? Well, that particular ice island broke off the northern coast of Greenland, where we haven't really seen this kind of effect before. And what's going on is that the temperatures in Greenland over the past decade have been very, very warm. And particularly over North Greenland this year, we've seen some very warm temperatures that have caused substantial melting of some of these glaciers and made them more vulnerable to large icebergs calving off of them. So it's just kind of a continuation of the warm pattern we've seen up there in the Arctic over the past few decades. What is the connection between all of this extreme weather and climate change, global warming, Jeff Masters? Well, what we're seeing this year is a preview of things to come. As the Earth continues to warm, we're going to see more extreme precipitation events. We're going to see more heat waves. And this year is kind of a, a foretaste of that. Now, not every year is going to be like this. For instance, if you look at last year, it was a relatively quiet year as far as natural disasters go. The amount of uh, dollars paid by the insurance companies was below average. But we're going to start seeing more and more years like this year when you get these uh, amazing events that uh, cause tremendous death and destruction. And the concern I have is that as this extreme weather continues to increase in coming decades and the population increases, the ability of the international community to respond to these disasters and provide aid to victims is going to be uh, stretched to the limit. And we're not going to be able to respond. And we're going to get in a situation where there's going to be global emergencies that continue year after year all across the countries. And we're just going to be uh, struggling to, to cope with that. Finally, Jeff Masters, explain what Weather Underground is and what you feel about, uh, I mean, there is tremendous amount of weather reported in the corporate media, in the mainstream media all the time. People tune in constantly for it. It's more and more frequent because it affects people's lives. And yet you rarely hear the words global warming put together with extreme weather. So there's no sense anyone can do anything about it. Well, you can put those words together with extreme weather. You have to talk a little bit carefully about it because no single event can be blamed on climate change or global warming. But what I like to say sometimes is that we load the dice in favor of more extreme events. And perhaps it's a better analogy to say we're putting more spots on the dice. It used to be when you roll the dice, you'd get snake eyes or you'd get double sixes. But I think now, particularly when we're talking about extreme temperature events, there's more spots in the dice. You can't roll snake eyes anymore, but you can roll a 13. And that's what happened to Russia this year. They rolled a 13. I don't think that kind of event was possible until the recent decades because global warming increased the baseline temperature of the world. So I talk all the time about global warming and say, you know, we have to be cognizant of the fact that global warming is making heavy precipitation events and extreme heat waves more likely. Can't say this particular heat wave is to blame for it, but boy, it sure is going to be more and more the case as the decades go on. We'll see these type of events. Would you call on your fellow weather men and women? Um, I mean, there are conferences, I presume, that you go to where all of you are talking to start making this link uh, in the mainstream media when they do their news reports. Well, I do talk to some of these people, uh, but most of them don't go to the scientific conferences. Uh, they tend to stay in their TV studios and, and look at their own data. Uh, I think there's a disconnect between the research community and TV meteorologists. And a lot of TV meteorologists are very skeptical that human-caused global climate change is real. They've been uh, seduced by the view pushed by the fossil fuel industry that humans really aren't responsible. And you can come up with all kinds of excuses. I'm sure you've heard them all, that you know, climate scientists are doing it for, you know, to get attention and research money, that the temperature record's flawed because, you know, we've got the heat island effect in cities and so on. But all of that is just propaganda that's been put out by the PR industry of the fossil fuel industry. And it's convinced a lot of TV meteorologists that that's the case. So 
uh, it's a tough road here because uh, we're fighting a, a battle against a, an enemy that's very well funded, that's intent on providing disinformation about what the real science says. So I do my best, but it's a tough uphill battle. Who is the enemy? Well, it's the PR industry in favor of the fossil fuel interests trying to convince us that uh, global climate change is not real. Dr. Jeff Masters, I want to thank you very much for being with us, co-founder and director of Meteorology for Weather Underground, an internet weather information service. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we're joined by Pablo Salon. He's Bolivia's ambassador to the United Nations, just back from climate talk negotiations in Bonn. Stay with us.